IBM for sponsoring this video. So scaling cloud infrastructure is a pretty buzzwordy term, but let's piece it together. Starting with infrastructure, infrastructure is just the resources you need in order to run your code and make it available to other people. This includes the hardware, so the actual computers that run your code, and it includes storage to store any data you might need in the future. It also includes the network. That's how you can get your software product to people accessing it over the internet. Cloud infrastructure is the virtualization of these resources. So instead of having this infrastructure in your home or on site at your company, you just hire some other company that has tons of computers and you can tell them on the fly how many you need and how you want them configured. So scaling cloud infrastructure is about dynamically changing how many resources you need and how powerful they are on the fly. Maybe you need a lot of CPU when more people are using your service, or you might need more storage if a customer is trying to save a lot of data. In both of these cases, you would scale up your infrastructure to meet customer demand. As customer demand lowers, you would scale down your infrastructure to just the resources you need. This is all fine in concept, but it is pretty abstract. It's also kind of hard to get your hands on a system where you need to scale up and scale down. That is, unless you're working at a tech company that gets enough traffic where this is required. But today we're in luck. Turbonomic from IBM is sponsoring this video, and they're giving us access to a system where there's enough traffic to actually scale up and scale down. However, before we can scale something up, we need to put it in the cloud. We'll talk more about Turbonomic later, but to start, we're going to take a Python application on GitHub and deploy it into Red Hat OpenShift. Then, we'll connect to Terminomic and use it to scale our infrastructure automatically. Now this all starts with GitHub, the home for our source code. If you aren't familiar with GitHub, I did this small series a little while ago. It was actually some of my first videos on the channel, and it'll give you a pretty good overview. Now this code is a simple dockerized Python application. It's from our friends at IBM, and it uses Flask, which is a Python web framework. This code is good, and in theory, it's ready for deployment, but we don't want to deploy this exact code. We may want to change it later on, and we don't want to have to ask IBM if we can change it. So instead, we'll fork this repo, or essentially create a copy of it, and we can change the code later on. We'll scroll back to the top and click fork. And I'm going to fork it to my account. So now it says Blondie Bytes and then the name of the app. Now we'll be deploying this code to IBM resources in the IBM cloud. So let's log in over there. Here we have a Kubernetes cluster, and this is where we're going to deploy to. We won't deploy directly from GitHub to the IBM cloud, but instead, we're going to use OpenShift in the middle. We don't want to manage our own version of Kubernetes, and OpenShift helps us do that. OpenShift helps us monitor our containers. So let's open up the OpenShift console and connect our code from GitHub. There are two modes at the top here, administrator and developer. We're developers, and so we'll go into developer mode. The admin mode is more for other operations. Let's create a new project and name it Hello World. Then, We'll import our code from GitHub to deploy our application to IBM cloud infrastructure and make it accessible to the internet. We can link it using the URL. The builder automatically detects it's a Python application. Now before we start the build, let's make sure that we've created a public route to the application so that everyone can access our software product.
the app is deploying. We can watch the status of it right here in the console. Now what actually makes this app deploy and build? Well, there's a Docker file in our code that's executed by OpenShift. It includes all the dependencies our code needs. The deployment is done. This means we've put our application, our code, on cloud infrastructure. It's running on computers managed by another company. Our app is now running in an OpenShift environment. This is great. Now what happens when we get a lot of traffic? We'll likely need to change how many resources we're using. Figuring out how many resources you need and of what configuration is tough. Most of the time, engineers are overly conservative and end up spending way more on cloud resources than they need to. They might just set it to the maximum of what they think they'll need at peak time and never modify it. In fact, it's actually pretty hard to predict what resources your app will need and it can change over time. That's why we'll use a tool called Turbonomic from IBM. Turbonomic is a cloud optimization tool that ensures applications always perform at the lowest possible cost. It automates the modification of your cloud resources so your app can meet customer demand. Let's add it to our app's infrastructure. To do this, we'll go into admin mode and click operators. We'll go into the operator hub. These operators are pre-packed deployments or packages that we can add to our infrastructure. To add Turbonomic, we'll search for Turbo and use the Kube Turbo operator. Now it does take a while for Turbonomic to set up because it performs some checks to see what cloud resources you actually need. We could wait for it, but there's actually another application that's already up and running and it's getting traffic. So let's scale that one instead. We'll go to routes and click the link. Turbonomic will give us alerts when our infrastructure needs to be scaled. To scale it, all we have to do is accept the proposed action. Let's look at one of these components in our application. We get some information about the resource utilization of our cluster. We can see how our cluster is doing. We can scale up or scale down and set the optimal configuration. Let's take a look. This one has to do with resizing the virtual CPU and increasing the virtual memory limit. The vCPU is underutilized and the virtual memory is meeting its limit. Let's apply the action. So that was pretty easy. We no longer have to guess how many infrastructure resources we need. We can just use Turbonomic and it'll automatically detect if our infrastructure is under or over utilized. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you IBM for sponsoring. I'll see you next time and happy coding.